We'll hear with His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Mazrur Ahmad. Thank you so much for joining us here in Calgary and uh, being here. First and foremost, I have to ask you, I know a lot of your followers are probably asking you or wondering what was going on. I'm sure you were watching TV. What was your reaction to last night's election? You see, even Americans were not expecting this result. So, but for the last few days, you could predict that this may happen. Huh? Because then there were 50-50 chances for both of them to win. It was not like it, it was in some few days or few weeks before. So it was somehow surprising, but not that much. There are millions of Ahmadi Muslims around the world. Can you foresee a good working relationship between yourself and the White House and Donald Trump moving forward? He is ignorant with regards to Islamic teachings. Had he known the true teachings of Islam, he would not have said all these things. Secondly, some of the Muslim extremist groups or people in the name of those Muslim groups are committing some brutal activities. So his reaction might be the natural reaction, but uh, instead of searching for the true teaching of Islam, and asking somebody what they are doing is actually the teaching of Islam, he plainly started abusing Muslims in Islam all across the world, even living in his own country. You see, there are some few thousand of Muslim extremists who are committing all these brutalities. And 1.6 billion people are not doing this, this thing. So I think had he taken some good measures to make good relations with Muslim communities, it would have been much better. Do you see a good relationship maybe moving forward? Do you hope to maybe correct him on what he doesn't know? I think now, once he comes to the office, he will also try to understand what true Islam is, because that was the election campaign tactics, and now is is going to rule the government. And I don't think American president is given such a free hand that whatever he likes he can do. He has to follow so many, you know, other obligations. So you don't think he'll follow through with his promise? I don't think I don't think he will ever implement what he was saying. If if if, if I pray that if it is my wishful thinking, it happened. How do you assure those at the mosque across the country and around the world that everything's going to be okay with the election of Donald Trump and Islamophobia and everything else that's happening right now? You see, I don't think people might have been having uh, some fears because what he was saying, if ever he implements, then you see, the world is already disturbed. The Muslim world, you can see they're rebellious against the governments by the rebel groups extremist groups, governments in the Middle Eastern, some of the Middle Eastern countries are not discharging their duties honestly and uh, killing the people, their own people. So if they see that situation there, they can have the fear in their minds that it might happen here in the United States. And if it happens here, so that will be a... You, you have some... The, 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 the start of the mm -hmm. world war. A, a civil war. A war so, a civil war in the country and even other countries. There will be disturbance all across the world. 
You, you're in the middle of a peace tour right now. You're talking to families here in Calgary and across Canada. What are some of the biggest challenges facing you and your community? As far as we are concerned, we are missionary community. We spread the message of love, peace, and harmony according to the true teachings of Islam and mention the, the holy book of uh, uh, Muslims, that is Quran. And we are law-abiding people. We do not retaliate in, in the way we are being treated. Even there is a law against us in Pakistan, enacted in 1974, declaring us non-Muslims, stopping us from so many activities, and it was further reinforced by the martial regime in 1984. And that says that we cannot name our children even as Muslim name their children. We cannot profess even the, 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 uh, let alone this uh, professing and uh, preaching. We cannot even um, practice what we believe. Right? So even then, we never retaliated. We never re reacted in the way we were being treated there by the so-called clerics there. So we are always law-abiding. If we live here, we shall live peacefully. If we felt that we cannot live here under these circumstances, we shall migrate. Where? That Allah knows. But I don't think the present day, the situation of the present day world is such that any of the big power can afford to behave in this manner, that you disturb your citizens to leave the country. So is it that anti-Islam sentiment by some leaders and ISIS, does that make a challenge for you in trying to get the word out of peace? The challenge in the sense that uh, whatever the brutalities or atrocities they are committing, it, it, it uh, defames the name of Islam. And we are the only community who is standing in the forefront to refute all what, is, what they are saying and just remove all the doubts what, because of their behavior from the minds of the people in the West. So the challenge is that we have to work harder than before to spread the true message of Islam. We've seen some cases of Islamophobia, very sadly, some in Calgary, parts yes. of Canada, and all across the world. Yes, yes. Why do you think that is? Is it ignorance? That is ignorance and because of their vested interests of those extremist groups and some of the clerics. They have misconstrued the true teaching of Islam and true teaching of the Holy Quran. If you read the Holy Quran, even like I've been quoting so many verses of the Holy Quran in my different lectures and addresses, Quran never permits you to behave like this. You see, Quran says, that Allah, in the second verse of the Holy, the first chapter of the Holy Quran, that the Allah, the God, is the God of all of the world, provider and sustainer of all of the world. And the prophet of Islam is the mercy of all of the mankind. If that, that is true, then how can you say that you, you commit all those brutalities and, and uh, you will be spared? Definitely, those who are committing in the name of Islam all these things, they will come under the wrath of the of God the Almighty. Are we doing enough to help, say, the Syrians and those see, Muslims that need the help they need? Whatever is being done now is one thing is that it should have been done much earlier than now. And even what is being done now is not enough. Still, they have the excess on the oil fields and oil refineries. 
they are selling their um, oil to the neighboring countries, even Syrian government is buying. There is fro free flow of uh, dollars in the ISIS area, even bank to bank trans transaction is going on. So how can we, and even supply of arms, where are they getting their arms from? So all these things show that it is not enough. And what kind of message, finally, would you like to give to Canadians who might be listening or watching to us and about, uh, they're wondering about the state of Islam and they're hearing from those who, like Mr. Trump, want a ban on immigration. Or what kind of message do you want to send to your followers or leave them with? You see, we have to live peacefully to my followers. As far as our followers are, the MD Muslims are concerned, they, as I have already said, we always live peacefully. And we believe in mutual understanding and, uh, you know, living in, you know, living amicably with each other. So this is always my message. Even I deliver this message in my sermons to the community members that is listened to in all across the world through our channel that we should never raise or we should never stand up. We can raise voice as far as as long as uh, the law permits us, but we should never raise or retaliate in a manner which is not uh, going according to the law of the land. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.